Leaving Sinner and wandering around the shop, I met someone else who made me realise that the vampire scene is more than just a dress code and could be potentially dangerous. I am very intimate with my blood drinking. It generally tends to be something that, to enhance sex. Um, maybe a bite in the thigh area, very close to an arterial vein, kind of go from there. I, I would say I've been drinking a lot more lately because I've been getting more and more intimate with my girlfriend. And she has kind of a vampire fetish. <laughs> Ghost told me that he performs within the vampire club scene, which has its own preferred entertainment for those who can stomach it. Tomorrow evening, we are doing what is known as a full stigmatic crucifixion. We are doing all five injuries of Christ. We are doing the whip lashings, the nails through the palms, the nails through the feet, the crown of thorns, the heart slash. We're also going to be doing piercings along my mouth cheekbones, through my cheeks, my ears, and through my eyebrows, making it appear as if my face has been sewn shut. What's going to happen tonight? Blood, mayhem, destruction, the end of it all. The party that's here tonight is a pretty much a very large gathering of my fellow family members, you know, the, the vampire scene. Yeah, of course, there are a lot of people here who have not been here before. They're going to see a show that's very risque. People are, are relatively new to what's going on tonight. We're going to see things for the first time. You've got to experience it one time before you know whether you like it or not. What we're going to be doing the center tonight is going to be transforming him into Pinhead from Hellraiser. Well, I have to shave my hair off so they can, you know, paint my whole head up and put needles in it. <laughs> the character in the film that we're transforming him into is bald yeah. completely, has no body hair of any sort, white skin with a grid painted on it, and needles at every cross section. Yeah, it might turn them off, they might leave, but then it might awaken something in them that will want them to see more and more of what that entertainment is. Tonight, as part of the performance, I'll be having, I do believe, it will be 17 needles uh, inserted into my arms and back with feathers attached to it. It's sort of a transformation, whereas um, <clears throat> I'm being given wings. My parents don't really mind what I do as long as I'm not um, killing children or small animals or doing some other horribly immoral act. They don't mind, they, they think of me as an individual, and they haven't decided to disown me yet, so I assume that they're pretty okay with what I do. I am 19 years old. Vampire community to us is a, a tight-knit family. We all get along together, we like to hang out together. This is why we have these type of clubs where people can come and enjoy this type of thing. We have a mixed group. We have people that are vampire enthusiasts that don't actually engage in any vampiric activities, but they like the aesthetic of the vampire world. They like dressing a certain way, they like wearing fangs, they like listening to music that is associated with the gothic vampire community. Of course, there are people that will actually engage in some ritualistic vampire practices, but it's not a publicized thing. So people keep that to themselves. Have you guys drunk blood before? Yes. We have drunk blood before, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it's from people that we know, friends, willing volunteers, no, never just run out in the street and bite somebody's neck and argh, not like that. Some people actually will exchange blood between partners. In a lot of cases, it's a relationship type of bond where there may be two people that care about each other deeply that exchange blood in a way to have a bond with each other. I would like to be viewed as a vampire, but I would never actually want people to know whether or not I was drinking blood because I like the mystique. I like the fact that people would look at me and say, wow, she looks like a vampire. I wonder if she actually is one. As the desire for blood performance art increases in vampire clubs, I discovered that the line between entertainment and self-mutilation can easily become blurred. I hear a lot of people saying, oh my god, it's crazy. How could you put a thousand needles through your skin? Uh, how could you bleed all over the place and paint walls with it? And, um, how could you drink it and share it and this and that and the other thing? But hey, if they don't want to deal with it, that's, that's their loss, not mine. I'm always taking every show as far as I possibly can. I've gotten to points where it's, it's gotten really close to passing out. Um, I, I have a high tolerance, I'm used to it. It's, this is something I do overnight. During the days is where I make my money, 
and I do piercings and uh, minor implants and scarification. What we're doing is piercing a lip web, which is under the top lip, which holds her lip to her palate. I don't step into anything I don't think I can walk away from. In the beginning is all the basic stuff, male nipples, verticals and horizontals, female nipples, and then into navels, double navels, triple navels, horizontal navels, just all different style navel piercings that are done. I've been involved in relationships where blood has been involved for quite a while, quite a while, so ever since like my early teens, since originally first dating. All facial piercings, ear piercings, earls, double earls. It all started way back, back in the day with the sitting in the clubhouse with all the boys and slitting our thumbs open and becoming blood brothers, you know. That was, that was actually probably what kicked it in originally. Tongue webbings, snake bites, double tongues. People seem to fear blood and body fluids and this and any other thing, not understanding that a lot of your body fluids, be it blood or semen or, or urine or anything like that, um, it, it, held, uh, it held rights in other, in other situations. It, it's more than just a... It's more than just a body fluid, you know, people don't understand that. Nowadays, they're afraid of it because of the society that they're in, because of the movies they, they see, and because of the news that they watch on TV. And um, they either display blood with disease or death or, 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 or pain or, you know, and stuff like that. And um, which leads back to the fact, again, that they just, they're, they're forgetting what it's really about. And, you know, they're, they're really, they're being tuned out by everything around them. It's keeping them away from what's real, you know. And, um, it's a shame. It's a real shame, and that's why I keep it going. By doing bloodlettings and doing implants and doing needle play and doing blood art and stuff like that, um, I do it so that it gets out there. And what I do is very visual. First, we start off with uh, some drum play, and um, that's just to bring the people the, the room's energy up. After after a few minutes of drum playing, and then I'll go into a needle play, and that'll start me into a small state-like trance. That'll just wake up all my endorphins. And I'll do as many needles as I possibly can in the length of time I have to do it. Where the needles are placed and the pattern that they're placed all has meaning to it. After we do a needle play, we'll do a bloodletting, and we'll try to collect up as much blood as possible. After a certain point in time, your arms and your legs kind of get a little numb. Your face will get really numb, and then you'll start getting tunnel vision. It's a fine line between being awake and not being awake due to the amount of blood in your body. It's a very fine line. Once you're not awake, if you continue to bleed after not being awake, then that's the end of that. You really don't have much more to go to there before you just won't be able to wake up out of it. Have you ever come that close? I try to as much as possible, yeah. I try to force the factor as much as possible, but still within guidelines of making sure that I can pull out of it if I have to. A lot of people during performances would want to be involved in the blood play, be it whether touching the blood or rubbing the blood on themselves or actually drinking the blood. For the rest of their lives, my, my blood and my genetic code and everything is now in their body. I get called for it, you know, it's, if they want it, they can have it. Anyone for the first time cannot just grab a glass of blood and drink it down. Um, your, your body would reject it, so you probably get really sick the first couple of times. I'll only share blood when the blood is fresh. After the bloodletting, uh, my girlfriend uh, paints with the blood. And she does artwork and paint on background canvas, or, or she'll just grab something out of the room and start painting with it or on it or whatever the case is. I don't get paid for this. I don't make money. Um, sometimes some of the artwork I'll make money on, whatever the case is. Um, I do live in New York. I do have food to eat, and I do have bills to pay. Um, but as far as rituals go, as far as sacrifice goes, as far as blood play goes, as far as all that goes, I'm always taking every show as far as I possibly can, pretty much taking it to the limit on my own extent, try, trying, to, trying to get my pleasure out of it as much as possible. I'm alive, so it's, I haven't done anything that wrong yet. Thank you.